So whenever it comes to box cutter, its intended usage method is actually going through the top bar and choosing your shape and going through and setting up which cutter you want and being able to intricately adjust your settings as you need them. Of course, you can go in and choose your start state for your modifier, but alternative to that, you could press D and D will bring up the Pi menu. Now the Pi menu for box cutter is basically remain unchanged. However, over time we wanted to attempt to make some changes to try to update and make it a little bit more flexible for users needs. And that's where if we expand the behavior drop down and we go under display, we have an option for simple Pi. And basically by enabling simple Pi under input, we can press D and it will allow us to have a simpler Pi menu where basically we have circle box, end gone and custom, and then there's wedge. However, in conjunction with D for your Pi menu, there's always been control D, which brings up the miniature helper. The goal of the mini helper is to assist users with doing things on the fly, reducing the amount of different hotkeys that would have to be used by allowing you to quickly wedge and taper and mark it as persistent and change your shape on the fly if needed. So the control D has always been thought of as a assistant, a helper of sorts, whenever it comes to box cutter. But for this release, we have definitely changed the way that these things are done. And so if we go under display, we see an option for a simple helper, which refers to the helper I was just showing on control D. If we turn it off, we are now using the new helper. And so by pressing control D, we can actually see the new box helper. The idea behind it was to make it similar to the hard ops helper when we press control tilde and hard ops. We have this glorious helper that lists all our modifiers and various workflow things we can adjust on the fly. So the goal was to give box cutter that same level of helper, but catered towards the needs of box cutter. Now the thing about the helper is that over the course of its development, we found that it became so useful that it actually became essential to possibly allow it to even be mappable to D. So currently I can press D and it's my pie menu. And then we press control D and it's the new helper. So this is the previous way that box cutter was configured. However, you can go under the input tab under the behavior dropdown and enable D key for the helper. I'll also take this time to enable alternative extrude. And from here, when we press D, we now have the box helper and we're now ready to begin talking about this. So now that we've went under our behavior sprocket and we went under input and turned on our D key helper, and when our display and turned off simple helper, that means that now when we press D, we get the new box helper. So to show an action why this is a little bit easier to use, we are currently in circle and we have our circle panel where we can choose our resolution of our circle. We can expand the sub panel and actually type in specifically how many segments we want on our circle, or we can just click the quick options to get a very particular type of resolution on our circle. We can change our type from polygon to modifier to star to three variants of circle, all within this nice little slider. So let's go ahead and just draw a circle. So now we're drawing a circle. I'm gonna take a moment and press tab in order to pause the shape. From here, we can press D and we bring up our helper. Now our helper is actually specially catered for us drawing a circle. That means that instead of our dimension showing X, Y, and Z, we actually have only the diameter. Keep in mind with any of these dimension fills that you can simply just type in something like 22 inches, press enter, and it will simply scale it to that size. Let's set it to something like two feet, two F-E-E-T, press enter and we can also adjust the Z depth. Another thing about it is we have access to the corner and origin dimensions during draw, which we can also change. However, I'll be going over that more in depth later. And that's really just the basics of using the mini helper to quickly get in and deal with something like the circle. If we click on bevel, we've now added a bevel to our shape and we can actually move our mouse off to begin adjusting the bevel. If we roll the wheel, we can give this one segment. We can press tab and pause it. From here, press D and bring our helper back up. If we click on the helper to collapse it, as far as the bevel slider goes, we can see that the bevel slider has an option for us to flip the bevel. So if we click on that, we see that we're able to quickly jump to a reverse bevel without any delay or need to press the hotkeys. So let's right click, let's just draw a circle. Let's press B to bevel, press tab, press D, click on the reverse bevel button, and there we are quickly just reverse beveling with the circle. So really it's that easy. If you click on the option or the name, 
or even the expand icon, you can get access to additional options and also to quick press that are actually associated with each of the particular press that have preset systems attached. So we went through a great deal to give all of our tools a ability to shine. Another thing, for example, is let's press D, switch over to box, and let's just draw a box. We can just draw our box out and we'll press tab to pause it. One of the new features of Box Cutter recently was the ability to turn it into a grid. If we just click on the icon for grid, we see that we have now turned this box into a grid. And because of auto solidify, which is part of box grid, we have a solidify modifier that we're also able to dynamically adjust within the helper, just allowing users to quickly get used to something like box grid. On the side is also wedge, which we're able to click wedge and toggle it off and on. Same thing with taper, we can activate taper and get in and quickly adjust the presets by giving it one we we're able to just quickly remove taper whenever it came to requesting this particular menu um, box cutter wasn't built in a fashion for it to be given such a helper however i did request to at least try and through our attempts we were able to get it to this level however i can definitely um, tell you that box cutter was not built for this as far as its initial plan however it's definitely going to become part of its future so we're talking about how we're able to deal with the various modifiers on the side, toggle them off and on, just like that. These modifiers are referred to as like shape modifiers. So they're kind of exclusive to each particular shape. If we right click and we press D, we see that we have our shape listing back. But the moment that we begin drawing, these options actually go away. So let's choose Ingon, and we see that Ingon doesn't actually have a box grid option. If we click on custom, we see that custom doesn't have one either. If we click on box, we see that grid is only exclusive to box, and that's actually part of the way that it was made. Uh, if we click on circle, we see that circle has a variant of star, and that's just how users are able to just quickly get around these things without having to go through any other supplemental sub menus or special panels of box cutter. So really in action, this thing is just poetry. So let's look at Ingon. So right here we have Ingon activated. A popular question with users is how do I draw an Ingon line? Well, there's an option right here where you can just simply just turn an Ingon into a line, meaning that whenever you draw, you are actually drawing an Ingon line. And what this means is that if we were to right click to pause by ending our last point, we can press D and we have an option for solidification, which can be adjusted. We can also begin just control scrolling over the extrude to give this some extrusion or just begin clicking and dragging it in order to give it some extrusion. So the helper, even in its hack state of the way that we put it together, allows a degree of versatility that box cutters never had with the previous helper. In fact, the way that it was before, it was getting really stuffed with options. There wasn't really a lot of room we could go through. Another area I want to talk about is radial array. So if we um, just use our dots and we just jump off the center dot and we just perform an extrusion and pause. We can press D and let's just click on array. So now we have an array and if we move the mouse, we're able to adjust this array, even though we're also able to do it with the helper still up, but we'll press tab to just pause this array and we'll press the helper in which we have options to choose which axis we're actually arraying on as well as the distance and you can even control scroll over the count in order to adjust the count on the fly or just click and drag to adjust your count. But the best part of it is that this circular icon allows you to quickly jump into a radial array. And so once you're in this, you see that the rest of the options have changed, allowing you to adjust your distance and count quickly on the fly. And this is actually probably the best way that we've created to approach radial array compared to pressing V and V inside of box, inside of box cutter. And really, with this, we are just scratching the tip of the iceberg. If we press D, we can jump over to Ingon. Ingon has multiple variants. For example, we talked about turning it into a line, but we also have the ability to turn it into a lasso. So just by clicking lasso, you're able to just turn this into a lasso. It'll let you know that you're a lasso, meaning that if we're in orthographic view and we just begin clicking and dragging, we're drawing a lasso cut. But the best part is that if you go over and you toggle the line behavior, you can also draw an lasso 
cyclic shape. And this is something that we want accessible to all users off the bat. These shouldn't be hidden tips. This is something that we feel should be something that any user who takes it out the box should be able to get acquainted with. So over time, as we gauge the approval of the mini helper, it more than likely will either become our default or we'll make adjustments to either shrink it down or grow it out to its final plan and final form to actually make it the thing that we envisioned it to be. But really, this was the best stopping point for this V1 to begin introducing it to you users because so much work has gone into this and it's been really months into planning. But I'll be doing a supplemental video going over this more in depth later and the uh, ideology behind each and every one of these sliders. However, with that, we'll move on to the next area.